He's brash. I don't know what's going on with those books today. He's over the top. That was the worst match I've ever seen, and frankly, I'm ashamed to have even witnessed. He's passionate. I'm going to tell you how I feel about the sport that I love, and that's the end of that chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rundown. Are your host, to Let me tell you something. You know when you hear that guitar, and you hear those drums rocking, you know we mean business here, folks. Boy, do we have a show for you today? So much to talk about in the world of professional wrestling. Welcome to the Rundown. I am your glorious host, Duke. And as you know, I love stuff. I love food. I love music, but more importantly to you folks, I love wrestling, and like I said, we have a fantastic show for you today, uh, we're going to cover Monday Night Raw, going to break down the goings on that happened there tonight, we're also going to take a trip down to China, the country of China, and see what's been going on with the pro wrestling scene down there, or rather over there, I should say, down there, jeez. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the huge news of the WWE releasing uh, a, a tremendous amount of talent this past week. Oh, boy. So we're going to talk about the uh, release talent and, and break down where they may go from here. So a lot to touch upon this week, folks. I can't wait. Uh, before we get started, though, I just wanted to give a special shout out to the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. You can check them out at www.pwhf.org. It is a brick-and-mortar Hall of Fame, so you can actually visit their location there. Uh, for this upcoming class, which will be inducted on May 20th, folks such as Mean Gene Oakland, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and the legendary Leilani Kai, one of the greatest uh, female pro wrestlers of all time, so it should be a, a fantastic show. Please, folks, support uh, the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Like I said, www.pwhf.org for further information. We have to respect our veterans there who, who have given so much to us uh, in this great sport of professional wrestling. It's the right thing to do, so check them out. Now, moving on here. It's time for this week's Raw Recap. And boy, what a show it was folks we had some highlights we had some low lights but for the most part it was a decent show today uh i won't carry on too much about every little aspect of the show i'll just go over some of the more important things you know uh sammy Zayn continues to impress he's in the mix of that whole intercontinental championship battle there you know Kevin Owens, he keeps bragging about the fact that he's already beaten Sami Zayn, so he shouldn't have to sit there and be subjected to the nonsense of Sami Zayn getting opportunities over him. Cesaro wasn't on the show this evening, but, you know, he's in the middle of things. Uh, the Miz continues to impress with his lovely wife, Maurice. Really enjoy seeing them out there. Uh, and also, we have Zack Ryder, who potentially is going to get plugged into this thing. I mean, he had a match today with Kevin Owens, and that, that was a pretty good match. You know, Zack Ryder, he, he's a talented guy, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him going forward. Uh, the New Day continues to feud with the Vaude Villains. It was funny because we had uh, the Dudley Boys insert themselves into that whole situation, so that'll possibly be a triple threat match coming up at Extreme Rules between the three tag teams there. We'll see. Uh, the women continue to impress surprisingly, Paige, Paige managed to get an upset victory over Charlotte this evening. Uh, Ric Flair was banned from the ringside. Poor Ric Flair. But he decided to come out anyway to try to help Charlotte, which he got a huge pop this evening. I mean, huge pop. That was fantastic to see. And Natty, who was doing commentary, she was terrible, although she looked fantastic. She continues to be in the mix of things in that women's division, which is exactly where she should be. Uh, I enjoy seeing her and Charlotte have the dynamic with each other. With 
that said, it's time to wrap this thing up here. Either give Natty the belt or move on. Uh, they put on great matches together, but it's time to move on. You know, but we'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks here, especially at the pay per view. But the big thing, big thing going on tonight, folks, has got to be the feud between Roman Reigns and AJ Styles. Now, first and foremost, the company is finally referring to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson as the club. They paired them up with AJ Styles again this evening, and they call them the club. And they did battle against Roman Reigns and the Usos who call themselves The Family. Whatever. I'll tell you right now, though, the crowd were eating this thing up. I mean, they were just so hot, especially when it came down to AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns. Side note, you all know how I feel about Roman Reigns. Nothing personal against uh, Joe, which is his real name. Got nothing personal against you, Joe. But Roman Reigns, the wrestler, the character, I can't stand this guy. I can't stand him. Okay, okay. I, I got to get that out of my system every week. But seriously, Roman Reigns, ugh, can't stand him. So, AJ Styles gave him a bunch of stiff shots today to smack that little ridiculous grin off of Roman Reigns' face, which you know I love to see. Uh, I'll tell you, though, that Machine Gun Carl Anderson and, and Luke Gallows, they continue to impress in the ring. They can sell. They can work their butts off in there. They're really starting to get comfortable in the WWE, which is huge because these guys are some solid workers, especially Carl Anderson. I mean, he's a workhorse in that ring. He takes most of the bumps, and he was bumping today, folks, let me tell you. But uh, the crowd is hot for AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns. Those guys put on a great show with each other. It's a triple threat match that ended up turning into a big-time beatdown. At one point, it saw Roman Reigns getting ready to powerbomb AJ through a table. AJ was getting ready to put Roman through a table. There were chairs. Everything was involved there. Uh, the whole nine yards. The crowd is hot. It'll be interesting to see how Extreme Rules pans out because it's starting to look like the crowd may want an AJ Styles title run here, which I don't know if the company is ready to take the title off of Roman Reigns, but I'm telling you, you finally give the people what they want, which is Bullet Club, or as you want to call them in WWE, the club. You finally put them together. You acknowledge the fact that they're together. You stop playing these ridiculous games of pretending like they're somehow, maybe they're together, but maybe they're not. Enough of that crap, all right? We want to see Bullet Club. We want to see Bullet Club run roughshod on the WWE. We want to see some super WWE faction eventually take over and kick Bullet Club's butt and go back and forth. That's what we want to see. Don't play games with the fans. Just give us what we want. So finally, it's starting to look like they're doing that, and it's paying off. I, I guarantee you the ratings for Monday Night Raw this evening will be much better than they were last week, especially during the segment. With Roman Reigns, the Usos going up against the club, AJ Styles, Machine Gun, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows. So kudos to WWE for finally giving the fans what they want. We've only been begging for it the entire time here. Thanks. Other than that, we have the McMahon saga continuing going on. Stephanie, Shane, who's in control? Uh, currently, they're looking like they're working together, but you know they can't really trust each other. We'll see how this goes here. I'm still expecting a some kind of uh, brand split where you'll have Monday Night Raw on one end and you'll have SmackDown on the other, and each sibling will be controlling each show. So wait and see how that goes there. But uh, like I said before, overall, it was a pretty good Monday Night Raw this evening here. Can't wait to see SmackDown. You know, what's interesting about SmackDown is that they're finally utilizing SmackDown in the way that they used to. What I mean by that is they're, they're putting original content on SmackDown. It's not just uh, rematches of whatever happened on Raw. They're actually putting some original matches on SmackDown, original storylines, and it's starting to work. So great job there with the SmackDown. Can't wait to see it. This is how you get the fans excited to buy back into the product once again. You have so many talented people going on there in the WWE that you really need to start delivering a much better product than what we've been given for the past couple of years. We're counting on you here, folks. That's right. And that pretty much wraps up the Raw recap. We'll be back after we take this quick break. Folks, as you know, the Duke loves. Duke loves wrestling, 
Duke loves food. And when I'm in the New York City area, Duke loves Barnyard Cheese. At Barnyard Cheese, I can get the best artisanal cheeses, soups, and award-winning sandwiches at an affordable price. Visit www.barnyardcheese.com. That's www.barnyardcheese.com for further information. Barnyard Cheese is located at 149 Avenue C, between 9th and 10th Street. Barnyard Cheese is the official cheese and sandwich shop for Duke Loves Wrestling. Enjoy. You've been asking for it, folks, and you know, since Duke loves wrestling, he delivers. That's right, we're talking about around the world, where we take a trip to a different part of the globe to find out what's going on in the state of professional wrestling out there. This week, we're checking in with our friends over at Middle Kingdom Wrestling in China, where Adrian Gomez and, and the boys out there, they have their hands full. There is a wrestler by the name of Len by. Let me tell you about this guy. He is just a terrible, terrible individual. Uh, he tried to break the arm of Middle Kingdom Wrestling heavyweight champion Dalton Bragg. Now folks, Dalton Bragg is the man worthy of worship. So the fact that anyone, anyone would try to break his arm is really unfortunate, especially considering the fact that he's gearing up for one of the biggest matches of his career where he's going to be at the Super Show in Shanghai coming up on May the 15th, 2016. It's going to be the first ever event in Shanghai, China, where CWF, that is Championship Wrestling Federation, they're doing a joint promotion here with Middle Kingdom Wrestling. They're going to put on a Super Show. Dalton Bragg is going to defend his MKW Heavyweight Championship against not only Big Sam, but also... H.W. Selfie King. This is a huge match. One of the biggest matches in the history of Chinese uh, professional wrestling. So the fact that this Len Bai tries to break the arm of the heavyweight champion Dalton Bragg right before this major matchup here, it's just really unfortunate, folks. I don't know what Len Bai's problem is. I can tell you this, though. There is a man who's friends with Dalton Bragg who is sick and tired of Len Bai, and that's the man that is known as Tony Travaldo, Double T. He is had it up to here, folks, with Len Bai, and he exacts revenge on the dirty rule breaker Len Bai. And if you check out www.middlekingdomwrestling.com, that's www.middlekingdomwrestling.com, there is the video up where you can see Tony Travaldo try to exact his revenge on Len Bai. Somebody has to do something about these rule breakers out there, folks. And I can tell you, if we don't stop the Len Bys of the world, then there's no telling what's going to happen. Okay? I, we're pulling for, for Dalton Bragg. We hope he does a great job there in his triple threat match. And hopefully Tony Travaldo can settle the score of Len Bai and stop this madman. That's all for now, folks, over in China. Next week, we'll be checking in with our friends over in the UK to find out what's going on professional wrestling there. With that said, we're going to take another break, and we will be right back with the show. Now, the, the top news in pro wrestling this week has absolutely been the WWE releases. This is uh, folks who have been released. They were not renewed for their contracts uh, by the World Wrestling Entertainment. And it's been very interesting. It's been the talk of the Internet all over the place. Everyone's been speculating and, and chiming in on this. And, you know, here, Duke loves wrestling, so I'm no different. That's right. Folks, the names on this list have been some of the strongest names that I've seen in years. Uh, just to give you a, a quick update here, Damian Sandow, King Barrett, that's Wade Barrett, uh, Santino Morella, Cameron, also known as Ariane Andrew, uh, Hornswoggle, 
Alex Riley, El Torito, and Zeb Coulter. Now, folks, these are names that at various times in the past five years uh, have been major players in the WWE. Now, I'm going to go down the list here and just say a few words about uh, each individual who's been released. You know, I'll start with uh, El Torito. Here's a guy who was paired up with Los Matadors. And, you know, he's a smaller wrestler, uh, vertically challenged. I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, and I don't want to get uh, beat up by anybody, so I'm not going to call him a midget, but I will say he's ver vertically challenged. Uh, and, you know, professional wrestling has always been a big history of uh, vertically challenged wrestlers. They put on a great show, do a great job. And in El Torito, uh, he was fantastic. You know, he was a little bull. That's what they, why they call him El Torito, bull. Uh, he did fantastic. And, and it's interesting because the Los Matadors gimmick has run its course. It does not exist anymore. So as a result, there really wasn't much for El Torito to do. So unfortunately, he was given his walking papers by Vince McMahon. You're fired, damn it! That's my Vince McMahon impersonation, as you know. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, so I'm sure El Torito will find gainful employment elsewhere because he is extremely talented. He, I mean, he would go up in the ring against all of the bigger stars and, and do a great job. So, you know, we wish uh, nothing but the utmost. Uh, best for El Torito and hopefully it works out for him. Uh, next on the list is Hornswoggle. Another, now here's a guy, Hornswoggle, immensely talented, was featured on the WWE shop.com website. They sold a lot of merchandise with Hornswoggle. Kids loved him. He's literally the size of your average seven-year-old child, uh, which the kids really dug that. And he was, his gimmick was he was a little leprechaun. Which, hey, the guy took that gimmick and played it to a T. He dressed up in the outfits. Uh, when he needed to be a heel, he was a heel. When he needed to be a baby face, which was most of his career in the WWE, he was a baby face. Uh, he got over pretty well. You know, and he even had a frog splash uh, move off the top rope, which was pretty fantastic. So uh, it's strange because Hornswoggle, he acted in a WWE film, uh, Leprechaun. And what's even more unfortunate is that uh, in recent years, he was put in rehab. I guess uh, Horace Wago had some kind of uh, substance abuse issue, and WWE put him in a position where he can get himself together. And unfortunately, he was released, but you know we're, we're pulling for Horace Wago as well, and I'm sure a guy as talented as he is uh, will find employment elsewhere, and who knows? Maybe in the not-too-distant future, make his way back to the WWE because I know that the fans really enjoyed uh, his gimmick. They enjoyed what he brought to the table. Uh, so best of luck to you, Hornswoggle. From what I understand, uh, he's already been advertised to do something with uh, Jeff Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling uh, promotion. So that's pretty cool. Hornswoggle's already taken bookings. Uh, we'll see what goes on with him. Uh, next on the list, we have Alex Riley. Now, Alex Riley is an interesting one. He was part of NXT. He was part of NXT, uh, the, I believe that was the second edition of NXT during its reboot. And you know, Riley was paired up with The Miz, and he had a fantastic run with The Miz. Riley was very talented. Uh, his character got over. He even beat The Miz in a matchup, which was pretty interesting. Got a lot of TV time. Uh, in recent years, he had to revamp his gimmick. He ended up growing his hair changing the colors a little darker, beefed up a little bitty. I mean, the, the guy was a dead ringer for Triple H. He looked exactly like Triple H, and his working style was very similar to Triple H. Well, clearly that didn't make him any friends there because they released him. You're fired, damn it. So, so much for Alex Riley there. I, I really feel that this guy was a little more polish. Maybe a change of scenery is, is what's best for him. I think he's going to end up being somebody in this business because he is immensely talented. And the crowd really took to him. I, I, I'm not quite sure why the company did not strike while the iron was hot and allow him to uh, take it to the next level by continuing to push him. Maybe they just didn't like his in-ring work. Who knows? Uh, but that's really unfortunate because Alex Riley is a talented guy. So 
we'll see what happens with him. But uh, good luck, Alex Riley. You're you're a pretty good talent there. Next on the list, we have Santino Marella. Now, Santino's situation is a little different. Santino is uh, officially retired from in-ring co competition. Uh, I believe he had a, a severe neck injury that has kept him out of the ring for the most part. Uh, Santino is originally from Canada. In fact, he has a, a training school up there where he trains folks in, in not only professional wrestling, but MMA. And uh, he's been doing a pretty good job up there doing that sort of thing. And in, in the past couple of years, he's only been showing up for special events for WWE and doing the comedy shtick and what have you, which everyone loves Santino. He's so talented. Uh, so not no big surprise here that he was released from his contract. I wouldn't be surprised if Santino... If this was a mutual release because he wanted to focus more on what's going on at home. I know he has a fantastic wife uh, who is, if I'm not mistaken, she's a professional arm wrestler, or at least was. She's very well accomplished. Uh, his daughter is also a model. She's fantastic. Wouldn't be surprised to see her become a WWE diva one of these days. Uh, so Centino has a lot of things going on with his wrestling school and his family. I'm sure this isn't the last we've heard of Santino. He probably just needs a break from the company. And, hey, after nearly 10 years with the company, I, I feel that he's earned it. So we'll keep an eye out for you, Santino. We'll plug whatever you have going on there, sir. Just give me a shout out. And, uh, hey, we appreciate you. Next up on the list, we have Cameron, also known as Ariane Andrew. Now, Cameron, she's a really interesting uh, release here. At the height of her career, she was with the Funkodactyl. She was one half of that duo uh, with Naomi. They did a great job, you know, the dancing cheerleader gimmick. They would mix it up in the ring at times. She was even put on the original cast of Total Divas, which was really cool because you got a chance to see who Cameron, a.k.a. Ariane Andrew, who she really is. Uh, her boyfriend, Vinny, who was a, really a cool guy. He has a, a nice character in, in his own right. These are two popular folks, especially on the show. Unfortunately, they were taken off the show in recent uh, seasons, which didn't bode well because Cameron, she still needed a lot of work in the wrestling ring, so she was actually taking off, taken off of the main roster for the WWE. She hadn't been on Raw in a long time. She went down to NXT and did some additional training, and recently she's been having matches there. Uh, but she's been doing a lot of outside of the ring work where she shows up at different award shows and you know she's been presenting and doing all this sort of thing hey, look look here's the deal with Cameron she was not the best wrestler in the world she's she certainly needs a lot of work just like anybody else um, that's just the way it is but she had a character that people cared about and she's immensely talented she can sing she can dance she's not the worst I've ever seen in the ring so there's definitely potential there and she's engaging so I, I have no doubt in my mind that she's going to land on her feet. I'm not quite sure it's going to necessarily be in the wrestling industry. In fact, for Cameron, uh, I would suggest that she look into some acting opportunities if she can. Because I, I do feel that she is someone who lights up the screen when you watch her. And there may be something out there more in that arena for her. Uh, but she, like I said, she's very talented. And, you know, her boyfriend, Vinny, he, he's a pretty solid guy, too. Real, real entertaining and interesting to watch who knows they, they could get their own reality show but uh, best of luck to cameron aka ariane andrew i'm sure you'll be all right uh next up on the list we have the legend zeb coulter aka dirty dutch mantel now zeb coulter is a legend in the professional wrestling world in fact i would not be surprised if he's inducted into the wwe hall of fame a lot of folks don't know this but uh for years, he wrestled as, as Dirty Dutch Mantel, and he was just a rough and tumble kind of guy who acted as a mentor behind the scenes to a lot of wrestlers. Guys like uh, JBL, you know, John Bradshaw Layfield, guys like uh, Cactus Jack, a.k.a. Mick Foley, and, you know, even more notably, guys like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, Zeb, Dutch Mantel. He was a, a mentor to all those folks, rode up and down the territories with them. Taught them a lot about psychology and how to wrestle and why you do the things that you do. Uh, and, and those guys are not shy about the fact that they appreciate Zeb, a.k.a. Dutch. Uh, they appreciate all he's done for them and they credit him for helping them with their career through the years. So, you know, 
This is a guy who people really care about. Unfortunately, in recent years, he's had some significant health issues that has put him in a position where he has to get around in a scooter now. I guess he's having trouble walking or what have you. So because of that, maybe the travel was just too much for the guy, and that's why the company had to part ways with him for now. That does not mean they won't find another way to use him. Who knows? I mean, this guy, he has a mind for the business. He's highly intelligent. He's booked for many years. He's been an agent where he's helping out the, the boys in the back and the ladies in the back. Uh, you know, Zeb Coulter, a.k.a. Dutch Mantel, he's not a guy who I feel is, is done. I feel like there's something else that's going to be going on for him within the WWE specifically. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. Although I, I do not feel that he'll be on camera again until he gets inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, that part of his career is definitely over. But there's probably something going on behind the scenes where, that they can help him out with where he can contribute more to uh, especially the younger folks coming up in the business. So best of luck to you, to uh, Dutch Mantel, Zeb Coulter, whatever you want to call the guy. Uh, we appreciate you, Dutch. Next up on the list, we have King Barrett. Wade Barrett, tall, muscular, rugged, handsome guy, uh, British, has that great accent. This guy is leading guy material as far as in a, in a TV or even a movie situation. Wade Barrett, he's had so many stops and starts in the wrestling profession. Unfortunately for him, he's had some injury issues. In the past, he's had some issues with his visa because, you know, he's originally from the UK. So he has to get the work visa in order to work here in the United States. He's had some issues with that in the past. Um, he's very talented uh, and he looks great. He's pretty good on the mic. He, he's a guy that, especially when he, I got some bad news for you, especially when he was doing that gimmick there, I, that got over. I mean, I got way over. Uh, the guy was even king of the ring. So it's, it's unfortunate to see him go, but it might be the best thing to happen to him because there may be some opportunities in Hollywood for the guy. So, you know, good luck to Wade Barrett. I would love to see you wrestle again, but, you know, if the injuries are just piling up too much, then, hey, man, get into the movies and, and let's see you on the silver screen. I mean, hey, The Rock did it. Batista did it. Well, why can't you? So, you know, good luck, Wade Barrett, and, and I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, next we have on the list is Damian Sandow, a.k.a. used to be Damian Mizdow. The stunt double. Listen, this is the worst release we've seen in years, folks, because Damian Sandow is one of the more talented people to come around in the past 10 years. Everything they gave this guy, he got over. Whether he was the, you're welcome, the intellectual guy, or when he was the Miz's stunt double, where he mimicked everything that the Miz did, Damian Sandow was just fantastic. The crowd loved him. Uh, he was very good in the ring. Good hand. Overall, it's just a pleasure to watch. So to see him not only discontinue being pushed, you know, not being put on TV where he can entertain, and then, you know, ultimately now he's been released, it's just unfortunate. And I really, really hope that uh, Damian Sandow lands somewhere where they will utilize his talents because this guy hasn't even scratched the surface of what he can do. Uh, and, and I think he's a future champion. That's how good and that's how much time I have for a Damian Sandow. So, you know, rest up, brother, and, and, and take a look at what's out there. I would not be surprised if I saw him in a TNA. I think a guy like Damian Sandow can be revolutionary for that promotion. Uh, Lucha Underground certainly could use him. Uh, but, or even, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I mean, he'd be fantastic there. Hey, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor would probably be the best place for Sandow to be. He could have a legendary feud with a guy like Jay Lethal out there. So, you know, the sky's the limit for Damian Sandow. I'm sure the WWE will be beating down his door again in another year or so uh, because, quite frankly, he's just that good. Now, we have a bonus person who has not officially been announced as being released, but something interesting has happened. I'm talking about Ryback. Ryan Reeves, you all know him as Ryback, uh, he had a contract dispute with the WWE, and as a result, he was sent home last week. He did he would, did not even appear on Monday Night Raw. He was sent home. Since then, uh, he posted some sort of uh, blog post where he discussed that he felt the wrestlers, no matter if they are losing matches or winning matches, they, they should be getting paid the same, which I don't necessarily disagree with him on that. I think he, he brings up a very valid point. If, if the company is determining who wins and who loses, 
Now, why are the losers making so much less money than the winners? At least the base, the base salary. That's what he said. I got to go buy it. I don't disagree with the guy. Uh, WWE has moved his merchandise to the sales section of the website, which the only time that happens is when they release a talent. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But if Ryback gets released, New Japan Pro Wrestling is the way he needs to go. He needs to go down there. He needs to be pushed as a monster. I've been saying it for weeks now. You send him to New Japan, he could be a monster down there with his, with his big, burly, muscular self, the bald head, the beard. You know, he can tear up Japan and make himself a more valuable commodity in another three, four years, come back to the WWE and automatically be in the title picture. I, mean, I think Ryback has that kind of upside. He just needs to be put in a position where he can shine. Is he the greatest wrestler in the world? No, but neither was the ultimate warrior. And quite frankly, neither was uh, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan was no Ric Flair. What they had, though, is they had personality. The fans loved them. They looked great. And because of that, they were able to be positioned in a manner where they were in the main event. Ryback could be that guy. He just needs to be in the right situation. So, you know, Ryan Reeves, listen, brother, we believe in you. We think that you will be doing some great things. So this bump in the road, is that's all it is, just a bump in the road. Good luck with everything. And that's really been it, folks, with the uh, releases. We'll be back in a moment. And that's all the time we have this week, folks. I uh, want to thank you for tuning in. As always, you can check out uh, YouTube.com slash Duke Loves Wrestling. That's YouTube.com slash Duke Loves Wrestling, R-A-S-S-L-I-N. Please subscribe if you, if you like what you're hearing. Leave some comments. Let us know how you feel. Uh, I want to give a special shout-out to WWE. You know, folks, they're putting on the Global Cruiserweight Series that's going to be coming up soon. And Ho Ho Lun, this is a wrestler who's from Middle Kingdom Wrestling out in China. Ho Ho Lun, he's going to be competing, representing uh, his nation of China, representing Middle Kingdom Wrestling. So good luck to you, Ho Ho Lun. This is the premier cruiserweight event in the world. A chance to say that you are the best. So thank you, WWE, for putting on such a fantastic event that's going to be coming up. Uh, I want to also give a special shout out to the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Once again, folks, May 20th through the 21st, it's going to be the 15th annual induction. Special thanks and a special shout out to Leilani Kai, the legend. She's going to be inducted this year along with me, Gene Oakman, and uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, the Blackjacks, you name it, they're going to be there. So please check that out. And in closing, folks, as I always tell you, we are here to help others, so be nice to somebody else. Be good to yourself as well. Enjoy life. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>